We'll get to all the weather details in just a moment, but first, a story you'll only see here on KXLY4 News. It's video that's hard to watch, but a Spokane family hopes you won't look away, as tonight they're looking for answers and justice for their grandmother. Watch. She tries to pull back, but her wheelchair catches and she ends up going down the um, escalator head first. What happened to Bernice Kokona? And does the fan, and who does the family want to be held accountable? Tonight, a Spokane family is demanding answers and justice for their mother and grandmother. They say what happened in that video never would have occurred if Alaska Airlines lived up to an agreement to help her niece in an airport last summer. The grandmother was traveling back to Spokane from Hawaii like she had done several times before. Her family arranged an airport escort, and when it didn't come, Bernice went off on her own. KXLY 4's Melissa Luck is here with the exclusive story of what happened next. Hey, Aaron, Bernice Kokona spent most of her 75 years on Maui. She came to Spokane for better medical care, but her heart is there on that island. When she left for an annual visit in June, her family here in Spokane never imagined this would happen, and that trip home would be her last. Grief knows no season. So this week, Bernice Kokona's family had no choice but to try to celebrate. It was kind of hard for us to get in the holiday spirit this year. You know, we just, we did it for the kids. Right next to their tree is where Bernice used to sit. Filled with memories now, she would sit here for hours, watching the kids play outside, dreaming perhaps of the life she left behind on Maui. She was here for the medical stuff and things to get there, but for the better part of it, her heart was there. Her heart and so much family. Eight kids in all, 24 grandchildren, 31 great-grandchildren. Bernice loved them all. And once a year, despite dialysis and diabetes and one missing leg, she returned home to visit. It was a process because we'd have to set up dialysis back home. And everything had to be in order for this to work. And we worked really hard making sure that everything was in order so that she could see her family and be with her loved ones. Every precaution so that Bernice would be safe including setting up mobility assistance through Alaska Airlines to take her from one gate to another. She's used the service before and used it with no problems on her flight to Maui. After spending a month there surrounded by family and friends, Bernice was ready to come home. The day before and as she was checking in, her family again confirms with Alaska Airlines that someone would be there in Portland to take her to the next gate. Attorney Brooke Cunningham explains what happened when that plane arrived at PDX. When she got to the airport, she was put in her wheelchair um, by a company called Huntley Corporation USA. And after being seated in her wheelchair, um, they walked away and Bernice became confused and ended up traveling through the airport trying to figure out where to go. Confused, Bernice ends up here. She pulls up to the escalator thinking that she's getting on the elevator at that point and before, once she realizes that um, it's actually the escalator, she tries to pull back but her wheelchair catches and she ends up going down the um, escalator head first in what you can see in the video. Darlene's phone rings back in Spokane. It pretty much told me that they're taking my mom to the hospital because she was at the bottom of the escalator. I, I yelled on the phone at her and what the hell is she doing at the bottom of the escalator? Bernice survives that horrific fall, but it leaves her badly cut and bruised. Cuts on her arms and legs, trauma to her chest and head, escalator teeth marks in her face. But it's one wound her family points to, a cut on her right Achilles tendon, a wound that despite hundreds of thousands of dollars in medical care, never heals. It's because she's diabetic, she does not heal as easily from wounds. And so her doctors did everything she could. She went to a wound care clinic who tried to um, help save that leg. She'd lay in bed screaming or pounding on the walls or she would like pound on her other leg to take away the pain from that leg. I can't take you, babe. September 6th, three months and one day after that tumble down the escalator, the wound on Bernice's heel turned septic. It got to the point to where we had to you know, take her leg, her other leg, and... September 19th, doctors amputate Bernice's remaining leg. Her blood pressure never recovers. She died the very next day. The family's attorneys say Alaska never once stepped in to help. They were fully aware of all of this. They never offered to provide any assistance to the family as they provide around-the-clock care, and they never offered to help them out with medical bills, which amounted to almost $300,000. 
We reached out to Alaska Airlines and to Huntley USA, the contractors who provide that escort service on Alaska's behalf. Huntley said they weren't aware of the lawsuit yet and couldn't comment. Alaska Airlines sent me this statement yesterday saying, quote, we're heartbroken by this tragic and disturbing incident. After landing in Portland, Ms. Kakona was assisted into her own motorized scooter by an airport consortium wheelchair service provider, who then escorted her from the aircraft into the concourse. Once in the concourse, she went off on her own. Today, they added more to that statement, saying, We don't have all the facts, but after conducting a preliminary investigation, it appears Ms. Kakona declined ongoing assistance in the terminal and decided to proceed on her own to her connecting flight. It also appears that when her family members booked the reservation, they did not check any of the boxes for a passenger with blind, low vision, deaf, hard of hearing, or other special needs. So there was no indication in their reservation Ms. Kakona had cognitive, visual, or auditory impairments. But this family's attorney says the responsibility is clear, pointing in their lawsuit to the Air Carrier Access Act. The federal act protects those with disabilities and their right to travel and says, quote, airlines are required to provide assistance with boarding, deplaning, and making connections. They were supposed to provide her a service. She's a vulnerable adult. They requested the service um, as they're supposed to do under the law. And Alaska didn't provide the service, and what ended up happening was the tragic death of Bernice Kakona um, way too early in life. Her family just hopes something like this doesn't happen to anyone else. I just want them to make, make it right. I mean, it's not going to bring her back, obviously, but someone needs to own up. Someone needs to take responsibility. The family's attorneys filed the lawsuit yesterday in King County Court, where Alaska Airlines is located. The claim is on behalf of Bernice's estate, and one claim filed for each of Bernice's eight children. You can read the entire lawsuit. We've attached it to this story on KXOY.com. We've already seen a lot of viewers commenting on the story on our website and Facebook pages. Many are commenting on the man that they see here. You see them in the blue shirt who jumps over that escalator and sprints down trying to stop Bernice from falling. I found that man today. I'll tell you what he has to say about what happened and what he did that day. We'll have that coming up in the next half hour on KXLY4 News at 6.30. Aaron? Melissa, thank you.